my dudes it's finally here and honestly I, i've just taken it out because taking it out of there was an absolute nightmare so we're just gonna admire the beauty of this fantastic new graphics card oh my lord it's beautiful right so if we get 30 likes on this video i'm renaming the forum page to be unknown and there's nothing anyone can do about that hey what's going on guys my name is games thanks and welcome back to beyond home it has been a really long time now this episode i want to build a plane i said i think i mentioned in the last episode that ah, i have a lot of science and i want to save up but no we're gonna build a plane because oh, i've messed about with the camera already i'm too used to building rockets <laughs> i really do like building planes actually um Despite the really not very creative name of Plane One, uh, I do I do really like making planes. Am I very good at making planes? <laughs> nah. Just that. Honestly, I I don't know. I mean, um, you can go watch my Mark Three VTOL that went to Hydrus and back, but then the, obviously people give the the impression like oh Beyond Home's not difficult because of the low gravity of the home planet, and I suppose that does give space planes a massive advantage. But hey, I'm not too bothered. Anyway, I want to I want to do a bit of talk in this episode because obviously I have had a fair bit of downtime. Now the reason for that is I uh, well actually we'll start from the beginning. My my old GTX 1080 graphics card decided it didn't want to work anymore. Well, actually, slight correction is it still works. <laughs> the actual card worked, but the cooler didn't. But the good thing is we had um, when we bought it we had a three year warranty on it. So uh, luckily, <laughs> we had one one month of warranty left. So we sent it back, and they were like, "Yeah, we can't do anything about this. Full refund." And we decided we'd get an RTX 2080 Super instead. And uh, honestly, it's 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 doing wonders. This is only like my first actual day of messing about with it. I did put it in my computer yesterday, but it was it was late, so I didn't didn't really get much of a chance to use it but I this morning it's oh it's it's very nice it's very nice um, I have done some benchmarking it's performing really well I'm just overall I'm really happy with it and the good thing about that is I got two I think I've, I've been complaining before what am I gonna do after I finish like recording Doom on the series because obviously that, that's the only other game that I'm recording at the moment and now most of you here aren't gonna really care at all about that um, I got a download code for Wolfenstein Jung Youngblood, which has mixed reviews on Steam, so it's unlikely that I'm actually going to play that, and Control, but the thing is, Control is something I've been looking forward to for a really long time, um, it looks like it's going to be really good, there's still something that appears off with it, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's one that I'm going to be playing through on the channel. Um, mainly because now I can actually play it with ray tracing as well, which is going to be nice. Yeah, and I'm just looking forward to it. I'm excited to see what it's done because it's basically, if any of you have played Quantum Break before, it's it's pretty much that. But it's the same company, I think. I can't remember who's making it, but I think it is the same company. And uh, Quantum Break was good. I didn't play it through on the channel because I wasn't really doing many Let's Plays back then. Um, but it was a good game, I enjoyed it, so hopefully I enjoy Control as well, and hopefully you guys stick along for that as well, even though Kerbal Space Program might be what you're subscribed for at the moment, and I completely respect that, but come on, come on, check it out with me. <laughs> it's not due to release until I think the 28th of August, I think that's when it's releasing. Um, I've just realised I don't really have much in terms of engines on this. It, it looks pretty nice, it looks like an SSTO more, well, it's not, but it kind of has that sort of shape to it, even though it's not going to be an SSTO at all. And I'm using tail fins as canards, I think they're called, and I really shouldn't be, but I am. Deal with it. <laughs> I don't have much in terms of manoeuvrability options, I can use this Elevon. You know what, we're just going to have this random one at the back, if I can figure out how to orient it the right way, there we go. I'll have this random one at the back, I'm not sure how effective that's going to be, but I mean the further back it is, the better it is, because it's going to have <clears throat> more of a pivotal force, I believe. A, a greater moment around the centre of mass. Um, but yeah, so that that's basically where the downtime's been for me. Um, I, I was able to edit videos. 
although very poorly, which is why I only uploaded like one actual Let's Play and then uh, <laughs> like a joke video of life without a graphics card. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that little skit at the beginning of the video as well. Um, it's just sad. The whole gnome thing, it's just become a meme on the channel now at this point, so I'm just going to embrace it and go with it. And I know some people hate me for doing it, but honestly, it's great. <laughs> Anyway, here we are on the runway of the road, and welcome to the reflections from this crap was oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, um, Kerbal Space Program 2, so after taking off I might tell you a little bit more about it. It seems our engines aren't really coping, oh wow, that is responsive, <laughs> it seems like the engines and the intakes aren't really playing nice together, so I might have to do a little bit of optimization there. I really hope, oh. Please don't hit the ground. Okay, there we go. There's our first plane in Beyond Home. This is really cool. Actually, I'm going to have to turn down this bloom <laughs> at some point. KO3P is just... Oh. Anyway, Kerbal Space Program 2. The engines are kind of distracting my commentary, which is a shame. But, uh, yeah, so where, where, should, where should we go, first of all? Let's go over here, because we fly this way way too much. So Kerbal Space Program 2. I watched the trailer, and I'm really impressed. I'm really excited to see what they're going to bring. To the community, it's from what what I'm aware of, it's a new studio. It's not Squad this time, and <laughs> that makes me happy <laughs> because uh, well, Squad is good and all. I I really don't like where they've been taking Kerbal Space Program over the last like five updates. Ever since 1.2, I feel like they've just been adding mods into the game, and I know they are limited to what they can and can't do. Um, for example, it's obviously can't just come up with something new that mods haven't because that's why mods exist for a reason but they're there to fill in the gaps in a way and now squad wants to implement that into the game and there are good things and bad things about that good things are it's continued support um, the stock purists especially the streamers and yes I am calling all the streamers out who do nothing but stream stock it's incredibly boring <laughs> I'm so sorry but um yeah it, it means they're happy, I suppose, that they have an excuse to stay stock purists. But um, in, in more seriousness, I, I, it's nothing new. And so, if if you look at, if you just go onto Google Trends and type in Kerbal Space Program, you'll see it's been really dropping in terms of popularity um, over time. And it, it shot up after Kerbal Space Program Two. But uh, Kerbal Space Program Two, it's it sounds like it's going to be really good. A new studio who seem very passionate about what they're doing based off their development video. I know promotional videos aren't really much to go along by because it's been, it's kind of what they want you to see. But um, I, I have confidence they have confirmed no microtransactions. Or at least, well, actually no, they haven't said no microtransactions. They've said there's not going to be loot boxes. Which means you might have some, but honestly, it's, it's a Kerbal game. And it's a single player game as well. There is no point adding microtransactions, so I don't think they're going to do that. Um, it should be more optimised, the physics engine should be a lot better because Kerbal Space Program's code is a mess, so I've been told. Um, I don't know what's happening with the planet system and how that's all working. Now then, are we going to be able to get over this mountain? What I, basically what I came over here for was to show you guys this cave. Not many people have seen it despite it being so close to the Kerbal Space Center. But uh, here it is. I, I don't think the terrain's really changed. Yeah, there it is. There's the cave. It's, it's just the regular old stock cave. And I just added it in using couple constructs. But I think it's kind of cool. And I think, unless I've removed it over here, there should be some sticky, alty, pointy triangle things. Which is another one of the stock monoliths. But I decided to put it on one of these mountains. For, just for laughs. I, I don't know whether it's actually still here or not. But I'm excited for Kerbal Space Program 2. Obviously, I do want to mod it. <laughs> I do want to do some planet modding if possible. I sent them an email. Uh, I sent what they even called the the new company. It, it's got star in it. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, I think Private Division got back to me. I emailed one of the companies and then some representative for Private Division got back to me and they were like, eh, we can't really disclose much about the, uh, the planet system. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. They're saying we can't really disclose much about the uh, the planet system, but we appreciate your effort going into modding and blah 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 blah. A bit of that. So it's just like, okay, fair enough. And uh, well, why am I retracting my landing? And that was basically it. Anyway, 
Let's uh, not crash into the tree. I'm pretty sure colliders are enabled on them. <laughs> Let's deploy these parachutes and come to a nice, hopefully safe stop. And there we go. I, I, I spoke too soon there. <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, that's fine. And see, that's why I use parachutes, because if you bounce around, disaster. I'm telling you, disaster. Yo, welcome back, and we are on the launch site, and uh, it's just it's just occurred to me that I haven't done much staging, but it's also occurred to me that uh, someone who, uh, if you are subscribed with notifications on, you should be notified when I post on my community section. Uh, if you don't know where that is, just click on my channel, go uh, where it says videos, Go go along to maybe, and it should say community, and you'll be able to see all of the quote unquote behind the scenes stuff, which is what YouTube calls it. It's really, it's not really, it's just kind of like a feed of what I'm doing. But anyway, I posted on there the uh, the new graphics card, an unironic version, <laughs> and uh, someone was wondering, yeah, how, let me know how it performs. And I I responded, I was like, uh, let me know what you want me to benchmark it in, and I will, and they didn't get back to me, so basically, I assume you're watching this video, so, um, it, it's really good, <laughs> it's really good, I don't know exactly how to put it, it, it runs Minecraft shaders at 4k, <laughs> if that's anything useful, uh, if it's more useful, um, this is Kerbal Space Program 4k running at 60fps on, uh, max settings with visual mods, it, it works a treat, and, um, YouTube's gonna hate me for doing this, but if I do this, you can see it, it's it's nice and smooth. It's really nice, and I'm really sorry if the quality on YouTube just went way down. <laughs> uh, anyway, this has a this rocket has a thrust weight ratio of 1.47 when it's full. Um, it's it's a very short and stubby rocket. I didn't want to use a mainsail because that would have had a two thrust, uh, two point five thrust weight ratio, and the skipper has a one. So I just used the skipper and put some other engines around the side. You know this gravity turn's not working out too well, so I'm just going to see how I can fix that. Um, this this looks like I am going to get an aquapsis of fifty thousand. No, oh, that's not too bad actually. That's not too bad. And also, Beyond Home, and now that I've got a new graphics card, I can actually develop Beyond Home again because without it, Kerbal Space Program was running at like 12 FPS. Yeah, but Beyond Home development, it will be starting soon, not just yet because I just need to set everything up. But this new Skybox, which I, I've, I'm in love with the Skybox, I'm really happy with it. It'll be coming soon, coming soon to a planet mod near you. Enjoy. I hope you all like it because I. Well, me and KSP Fanatic put a lot of effort into getting this ready. Um, so I hope I think it's an improvement over the old one. I mean, some I know a couple of people do like the old one because it it's got that sort of kraken feel. You can see like kraken tentacles in the sky uh, in one of the in the green nebula, I think. But I I really like this one because Elite Dangerous was it was basically sort of inspiration for this. It wasn't quite because the idea isn't Elite Dangerous at all. But um, I'm just really ha I w happy with the concepts of using Elite Dangerous looking planets. And uh, I think it turned out really well. And there we go. That looks like a lure encounter to me, my dudes. Like, literally hitting it. Alright, now the planet is... The moon has rotated, so... That's, that's, it could be better. Could also be an awful lot worse. So, um, if you're not familiar with lure, its atmosphere is 10 kilometers tall. And it's it's pretty thin, actually. It's pretty thin, but you can land on it using parachutes, which is kind of why I'm beating myself up for not bringing them, because that would have saved Delta V. But then again, I've got 4,619 left. Um, but here we go, we're about to land a lure, finally. And we'll plant a nice flag. Okay, I should probably not time up quite so much. And it looks relatively flat. It looks flat enough for this lander. I'm just going to have to keep myself at around 4.4. And then we'll kill this off right towards the end like this. That that was perfect. That, 
okay, maybe not quite so perfect now that I, <laughs> I thought the ground was a bit closer than that, but no, this is good. It's a lot better from the last landing where I was bouncing around, but here we go. Landed on Lua. I really don't advise landing here, so I'm just going to plant a flag and just call it a void or something. <laughs> Right, anyway, I can see something over there that might look like it's ash, but I'm not I'm not too sure. I mean, I could whilst I was outside the craft. So if we look straight up, is ash over there somewhere? Ah, it's Armstrong. That'd be why I could barely see it. Because ash is a pretty big moon. And we are off. We are heading back to road now. I might have to cut quite a bit of this out because I've been, I've been recording for a fair amount of time. So I'll see you all when we get an encounter with road. Alright, here we are. We are just entering roads for open so It should be safe enough to just kill our velocity here and land on the daisy side for once. Then again, I am normally landing in the day side, but landing on the night is no fun, is it? Yeah, it looks like we could be fine. Get that down to mm, yeah, 3000. I'm going to be. Get a, a th do I have a heat shield, first of all? I think I do. We're fine. It's fine. We'll make it. <laughs> This skybox, I am so happy with it. Look at that. There's road. It just looks so. I, I want to say it just looks so real and so natural compared to the other skybox. Obviously, it's a matter of preference, but it it, it fits the style now, and I'm really happy with that because Elite Dangerous was the style that I was really going for this entire time, and it fits the style. <laughs> it works. It works so well. Like all the textures, all the train textures and stuff, it's all in that sort of style. Anyway, let's slow ourselves down just a little bit because I still have 2000 Delta V to waste. So uh, I'll deploy all of this. <laughs> That's a nice mountain over there which hasn't quite loaded in. Maybe if we do that. No. <laughs> it just looks like a, a pyramid. Oh, it looks like we're going to land on a mountain. That's no fun. Right, let's actually turn the stage off before we decouple this time. <laughs> there we go, now it's not going to hit us. And let's just move out the way in case it does. Nah, it looks like everything's going to be fine. I'm going to change this altitude to 550. Oh, there's that stage hitting the ground. Ooh, that was close. And we're landing in a nice desert. But game slings. All of road is desert, is it not? I suppose. <laughs> that would make sense. And here we are. We are back on road. Probably quite a bit of a longer episode today. Uh, I'm not sure until I've edited it, honestly. How much commentary I have to cut out. I'm going to try my best not to cut any out, but I don't know how long I've been recording for. So, um... Yeah, just a little bit of housekeeping this time. Um, we ended up with less science than we did previously but we made a little bit of money and uh, in in between episodes I did upgrade the hangar and the runway so we've just made a bit of that money back anyway guys thank you so much for watching this episode if you like that remember to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next episode <laughs>